It was the summer of 1964, and the civil rights movement was rocking the nation. The movement's marches, speeches, and nonviolent protests were changing the way Americans thought about race. But Mississippi clung to its segregation and denial of basic rights for blacks. In order to combat this continued oppression, using the power of the vote, the Mississippi Summer Project was founded by the Council of Federated Organizations, COFA, an umbrella organization made up of major civil rights groups including the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Peoples, NAACP, the Congress for Racial Equality, CORE, and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC. The Mississippi Summer Project would come to be known as Freedom Summer. In 1962, only 6.7% of blacks of voting age were registered to vote in Mississippi, the lowest rate in the country. Registering to vote at that time meant that you filled out a 22 question qu questionnaire. One of the questions was interpret any of the 286 sections of the Mississippi Constitution to the satisfaction of the registrar. Now, you have to bear in mind that some of those registrars couldn't read or write, but that didn't matter. They could still determine who should be registered if that person happened to be black. The use of fear and intimidation was also a common practice in Mississippi. If a black man was to register, he faced the prospect of beatings, being fired, or even being lynched by the powerful Ku Klux Klan. Realizing the need to affect change in black voter registration numbers, the Kennedy administration granted civil rights groups financial aid if they were to focus on improving voter registration. But, after two years of small-scale voting rights efforts in the South, Mississippi showed no significant improvement in voter registration, and less than 4,000 blacks were newly registered. That same year, COFO created the Freedom Vote campaign in Mississippi. A prelude to Freedom Summer, the Freedom Vote was a mock vote organized to give blacks the chance to practice casting a ballot, showing the state that the black community wanted to vote, contrary to the state's claim that the low black registration numbers existed because the state's black people had no interest in voting. 93,000 votes were cast in the mock election. Following the project, an unknown organizer stated, What we have discovered is that the people who run Mississippi can only do so by force. They cannot allow free elections in Mississippi, because if they did, they wouldn't run Mississippi. After the great success of the Freedom Vote, COFO decided to send volunteers to Mississippi in the summer of 1964, a presidential election year. Mississippi was selected not only because of the desperate need for change, but also because 45% of the state was black. If these blacks were registered to vote, they would be able to affect a great amount of social and political change. Although the 1964 Civil Rights Act had passed as a historic moment for the movement, the bill had failed to address the issues of voting rights, and there were many necessary changes to be made. And so, the innovation of Freedom Summer was born. Freedom Summer was a project organized to change these low registration numbers, empowering black citizens of Mississippi to promote their rights and freedoms through democracy. From the many issues to be dealt with during the civil rights movement, officials chose to focus on voting rights due to the significance held to the nation's democratic principles. A volunteer describing why this project and other projects fighting for freedom are important to him says, I'm down here because I believe that my freedom is very much entangled with the freedom of every other man and that if another man's not free, then I'm not free. So I'm fighting for my own freedom here. Freedom Summer centered on three programs, establishing freedom schools, building community centers, and registering voters. The schools were set up so that young black children would develop the knowledge and skills that they had been long denied and could grow up and vote. Mississippi schools at the time were poorly funded and textbooks were racist. 30 freedom schools were established throughout Mississippi. The freedom schools were taught by volunteers and the curriculum focused on encouraging the black children to question the powers of be and be proud of their heritage. Community centers were also set up during the project. These centers would encourage open thinking and help teach adults how to vote. To help register voters, volunteers would travel to Mississippi to hold registration drives and spread the word about the importance of voting. The brave volunteers faced much violence from the white citizens, and several were beaten during their work in Mississippi. In part to help draw national attention, COFO recruited white Northern College students as volunteers. The students would be trained in early June at their colleges, and then sent down to the South to help. On June 21st, three workers were reported missing. James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schroeder were found dead six weeks later under a nearby dam, making headlines throughout the country and drawing support and sympathy for the civil rights movement. The long-term goal of Freedom Summer was to change the distribution of power in Mississippi. The short-term goal was to be able to challenge the all-white Mississippi Democratic Party at the 1964 Democratic National Convention in Atlantic City. The Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party was established as an official political party in order to achieve this short-term goal. 
The regular Mississippi Democratic Party had a long history of ignoring the needs of blacks. By the end of August, more than 80,000 blacks had joined the MFDP, although over 1,000 were arrested for it. Throughout the summer, the MFDP pushed hard to be seated at the convention in place of the segregationists. They took their case to the National Democratic Party's Credentials Committee, where Fannie Lou Hamer, a sharecropper turned activist, kept the audience riveted with her impassioned case for the Freedom Party. I question America. Is this America? The land of the free and the home of the brave. President Lyndon Johnson, although wanting to help the civil rights movement, knew that backing the MFDP would lose him the much-needed support of the Mississippi Democratic Party. He called upon Senator Hubert Humphrey, a liberal who highly backed the civil rights movement, to defuse the situation quietly. Humphrey offered a compromise. The segregationists would continue to be seated, but the MFDP would get to seat two delegates that would not represent Mississippi but would simply be considered delegates at large. The MFDP refused this offer, saying that accepting would tarnish the party's dignity. Despite the failure of the effort to challenge the Mississippi Democratic Party, the fight gave strength to the black community of Mississippi. For the first time, the black community was involved in the politics of the state. National attention was drawn to the cause for voting rights in Freedom Summer. Although Freedom Summer was over, the fight for voting rights would continue on. In Selma, Alabama, blacks were facing similar struggles with voting registration. Freedom Summer had made the quest for voting rights a well-known issue to the nation, and the blacks of Selma were fed up with the discrimination they continued to face. On March 7, 1965, a day now known as Bloody Sunday, 600 civil rights activists attempted to march from Selma to Montgomery to protest the oppression they faced at the state capitol. But the marchers barely made it six blocks when they were attacked and brutally beaten by local and state police. August 6, 1965, President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965 into law. This law was a direct result of Freedom Summer. Section 4 of this law banned the bias literacy test and other exclusionary devices used by the white registrars. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 has been called the most effective civil rights legislation of all time. Its purpose was to enforce the 15th Amendment. Slowly but surely, the Voting Rights Act came to be enforced and black voter registration numbers grew. By 1969, 66.5% of voting age blacks were registered in Mississippi. Changes continued to be made to the law. In 1975, the law would expand to protect language minorities from voting discrimination. Freedom Summer energized students to speak out against injustice. Says volunteer David Grass, The heroism I saw in Mississippi inspired me to become involved in the major anti-war demonstrations, the Cleveland riots in 68, the Kent State episode. Freedom Summer would also help to instigate the formation of the free speech movement that began at Berkeley College in the fall of 1964. A new school policy had prohibited the students from setting up tables on campus to support off-campus causes, such as civil rights. The free speech movement was led by Mario Savio, a Freedom Summer volunteer who was deeply inspired by his work during Freedom Summer. During Freedom Summer and the civil rights movement as a whole, many women felt as if they were being pushed aside or treated as second rate. In a project to promote racial equality, they felt as if this sexism was extremely ironic. And maybe, sometime in the future, the whole of the women in this movement will become so alert as to force the rest of the movement to stop the discrimination and come to understand that this is no more a man's world than it is a white world. These feelings would feed into the feminist movement. Many volunteers in Freedom Summer would continue to deal with social and political issues. Volunteer Stephen Blum founded Upward Bound, a program that teaches low-income high school students skills to help them reach college and succeed in the world. SNCC leader Bob Moses founded the Algebra Project, a program to help inner-city students with math skills. Both of these programs are reminiscent of the Freedom Schools, as they are programs that help children receive opportunities and educations that they would often not be able to receive due to issues in society. Some Freedom Summer volunteers would go on to careers dealing with affecting change in society and politics. Barney Frank, elected to Congress in 1981, was a volunteer in Freedom Summer. Volunteer Heather Tobis Booth became co-director of Citizen Action, a progressive political organization with over 1.5 million members. In 2000, Booth was hired as the NAACP National Voter Fund Director, which empowered voters and increased black voter turnout by almost 4.5 over the 1996 numbers. Of all the impact and change Freedom Summer made, the simplest yet most meaningful is the changes made to the lives of black Mississippians. Larry Taylor, a black man who grew up in Como, Mississippi during the 1950s, described his new outlook and feelings of hope after Freedom Summer, saying, After Freedom Summer, for the first time in my life, I feel like an American.